So I'm Ramesh Nagaraja. I'm, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I grew up in the city in Roxbury. Uh, and you know, we, we all were in the MECO program growing up, which anyone local to Boston knows is our, it's a voluntary integration program that started in the late 50s after or during the civil rights movement and has been running ever since busing inner city kids, mostly minorities to suburban schools with the hope of on one side, improving the diversity on in those schools and also giving a better educational opportunity to the city students. The specific community I was in at this church, I think there were a lot of families that really valued education higher than what I saw generally across the community and had kids who I, I watched grow up and become division one athletes or Ivy League students or doctors by the time they're like 27. Like wow. I was seeing stuff like that, which I think was rare to see in the community I was in. I guess I should probably start in why I wrote the article. I think it was a very unique time where these issues really picked up a lot of steam really quickly. And, you know, I'm a guy who likes to discuss important things with my friends. And like, you know, I wanted to be able to, to offer some insight but i i like to take the perspective of like i try to listen early on when these things are happening and like read and let my thoughts build up you know obviously there's so much anger rightfully and all these feelings rightfully on display but i thought there was like a, a very unique lens that a person who's very close with the white community but affected personally by these issues and has skin in the game for them to give a perspective, I think would can I thought would connect better with a lot of, frankly, in my experience, a lot of good white people who just maybe don't understand where they play a role in this, or how they can be better, or what things they've seen and maybe never recognized. Right. And then on top of that, how much of it was like, have I just been assuming that they know these things when the truth is I maybe never talked to them about it? Yep. Because like to me these things are like obvious, but so obvious, yeah. you know, within your own sphere and bubble and perspective, like you just know what you know and how you were raised and, and what you see in life. And which if we're doubling down on all these conversations, it's like that's gonna be a reflection of a privilege that you don't even realize you have, which is probably the hardest privilege to, to talk about. Right. So I wrote the piece expecting it to really just reach you know my friends and then their circle of friends with like you know the, the power of a one-click share yeah two and a half million views on medium and like they made me a partner and i've had calls all the time there's all this work being done by the globe at the time actually on like the racism in boston a lot of this actually makes sense because like i'm always hanging in these like white parts of boston because it was the first time i really realized like whoa west boston is like so segregated <laughs> like and people will be like you don't have the boston accent and then i'm like Hmm. Well, that's really only in the white part of Boston. Like, right. and like, I realized that, and I realized I would be out in these places like Cisco Brewery in in Boston, and like, be one of four black people there. And like, some people would give me weird looks or be surprised if I want to talk to them. Or like, what's yeah. he doing? Or when I'm in like parts of South Bend, and I realize the, the deep racial tension history there. And I'm like, well, now it kind of makes sense when I get kind of oddly treated in some like bars or or when I'm trying to like get in somewhere like in that Boston Globe piece it's like around the number it's like it's only four percent of the black families in, in Boston belong to the middle class which is like a crazy number it's a big thing in sports athletes black athletes talking about how they hate playing like visiting and playing Boston because they're like I've never experienced more racist fans in my life right and I, all this stuff was like new for me when I was first getting into school and facing these issues but then it sort of started to grow and me starting to realize it a lot especially as I got friends who were from such different parts of the country whether that was my white friends from the midwest and the south yeah. or like specifically my black friends who grew up in the south and they're like dude like where I'm from you do not interact with the white people like the white people a lot of them make like you would feel like they hate you our communities are like the tension is like obvious and clear and like it being really hard for them to come and for the first time in their lives be the only black kid in the classroom or the only black kid in the friend group or on a football team and like that experience and watching that change and like us come from two different perspectives and like come to the sort of this middle ground where like now i recognize some of these issues 
and see them for what they are. But then my friend on the other side who was so polar opposite from my comfortability comfortability with white people. Yeah. Watch that perspective come closer. Like, well, now I see I can have genuine relationships with these people. Allyship is, and being an ally has kind of become like a hot term now. And maybe it's like, it's numbed now and overused, but yeah. there's so much going around of like, how to be a better ally and like it looks different in every situation in every person and my friend who's a social justice warrior in everything when she's my ally like, like she's gonna call someone out for the maybe to you might like a, to a third party might seem like a small thing and she's gonna give a really educated perspective on it and help that moment grow in a really powerful way yeah. and she's capable of like calling out her family when they say something wrong every single time you know but like my friend from middle of nowhere ohio or pennsylvania like him being allied to me is him you know like reached out to me and was just like hey man until i read your piece i didn't realize that a lot of the jokes i make and things i say are wrong yeah and like and ill ill rooted and like you know i'm a good guy and like you know my values and that like i've always treated you with respect but like just know that i'm trying to be better about that and i'm trying to learn more about this the truth is you're gonna learn how to do it right by doing it wrong and it's like that one time that you reach out to someone the wrong way or address an issue the wrong way or really miss an opportunity to address something serious yep so like don't be afraid in these situations of messing up or doing the wrong thing because like obviously we live in the age of cancel culture and outrage culture but like the courage you need to have is like go with the feeling inside and put your heart on the line and if you say the wrong thing or they do the wrong thing yeah. your heart is out there people should see that and you're going to do better about it in the future and like even if you're the best ally you're going to mess up 